Hello, welcome back to Viruses Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue off Susan 2.0. So last time out, we spent pretty much the whole episode in some sort of big meeting with uh, the PFJP and the NFP, uh, discussing the uh, Ishval Urson case, as well as kind of some ideas about what to do with looter civil rights. Uh, none of it sounded particularly interesting, so we're just kind of doing our own thing, I guess. Um, yeah, we're on a new chapter here, so we've got a couple reports, a handful of newspapers. So let's read those before we uh, head to full sort here. Uh, looks like just one report. So from Uzrin BFF Recruitment. It is reported that in the villages around Uzrin, a group of BFF missionaries are seeking to recruit militants to fight for the BFF. Governor Braun reported that the Gendarmerie forces in the area are now actively working towards eliminating the threats. Okay, interesting. All right. We have four newspapers here. So first up is from the Lockhaven Times. Heartbreak for FC Anarka as FC Gelsord secures back-to-back -back league titles. In a nail-biting finish to the season, FC Gelsord has once again clinched the Swordish National League Championship, leaving FC Anarka in second place by a mere points. Highly anticipated title race came down to the wire, with both clubs fiercely battling for the top spot. Despite a, remark despite a remarkable season for FC Anarka, their hopes of claiming the league title were dashed in a devastating loss during the FC Gelsord Derby. The closely contested match proved to be the turning point, ultimately costing FC Anarka the championship. I don't know if all these extra little uh, like football updates are necessary, but they're kind of fun for a little bit of world building. I like them. Alright, and from the Radical, world ignores the bluish plight. Barred from high paying jobs, discouraged from attending university, spat on in the streets. Where is the outrage against Swordland's relentless oppression of the blues? For decades, Bluetooth Swords have been treated as lesser beings, with the law still allowing rampant discrimination from businesses and educational institutions. We call on the international community to raise awareness of this tragedy so that we can begin promoting equality among all sorts of citizens. I won't argue that. Alright, then we have two from Geopolitico. Ooh, this one's brand new. Yeah, I think the last one was probably new too, but yeah, anyway. Political assassinations rock Ventry City amid Arkazian election. Ventry City, the bustling metropolis in Arkazia, has been shaken by two unprecedented political assassinations during the current campaign season, raising concerns about the safety and integrity of the highly regarded electoral process. Arkazia's society has long been defined by its focus on minimal government intervention in business and the economy, leading to the rise of influential corporate-backed figures like Dwight Walker. Recent events, like the further deregulation of some state industries and the deepening privatization of public services, have amplified the power of top corporations, resulting in cutthroat competition for political influence. The surge of instability in Ventry City has revealed the sinister side of this competition, with accusations of corporate interference in the elections escalating to violent confrontations. Insiders indicate that several high-profile corporations, including some with ties to private military corporations, are battling for control, employing lethal force to eliminate rivals and secure their interests. In response to the mounting violence, both PMCs and the military have been mobilized to safeguard political parties and maintain order. Their presence has offered a degree of stability, although the underlying issues continue to fester. As the election season progresses, Ventry City citizens and the international community anxiously anticipate the outcome, hoping for a peaceful resolution and a return to stability in Arkazi's usually calm political realm. And definitely another new one, Volgish man shot after burning Agnolian flag. The Heliland protests that started against the governor who was appointed by the Agnolian government are continuing without slowing down. After the supportive statements by Chancellor Emmerich Hagel, the Volgish protesters assembled in front of the governor's office in Heliport and waved Volkslandian flags. One Volgish protester was photographed as he climbed the flagpole of the governor's office and brought down the Agnolian flag. He shot by the Agnolian authorities on the island when he attempted to burn the flag with gasoline. Protesters claim he was shot in the neck and was killed immediately on the scene, while the Agnoli government has not released any statement about the subject. The incident sparked further unrest and protests turned into riots around the island. Many Volgish protesters are now calling for Volgsen to save them. Chancellor Hagel is quick to respond to the incident, saying Volgsen stands together with her people in Heliland. No regime can murder its citizens because they protested. If this conflict continues, Volgsen holds the right to intervene to save her people. Okay, that might actually not be new. I think that sounds familiar. But that's all right. Anyway, let's see. Let's uh, let's hit the whole sword, and we're going to take a call from Marcel Carotti. <clears throat> I was in my office, looking through the agenda for the upcoming meeting at the Ministry of Economy. 
The meeting was going to be about the ownership of the big four, the four largest companies in Sortland, the heart of Sortland, Burgess Steel, the Sorge State Corporation, and Netta Mining Group. Some of these companies were controlled in part or entirely by the state. The others were mostly or completely privatized. I had the power to change that. The phone rang and I put the agenda down. I picked up the phone. It was literally the only option. Greetings, Mr. President. I'm sorry to disturb you before such an important meeting, but I thought now would be a good time to talk about our arrangements. I'm sure you'll agree that the support I and my network have given your administration has been nothing but beneficial. Half the non-state media in the country has been sharing positive news about you and downplaying negative events. Our partnership certainly has been successful so far. I'm glad you agree. Your public opinion could have nosedived were it not for us. I heard him knock on wood. On another note, I can't help but mention your tax hike, Mr. Persons. The increased taxes have made a substantial dent in hard for Sultan's net profits. This has hurt the backbone of the Sorge economy. But I assure you, it is nothing we can't endure. Unfortunately, we had to tighten our belts wherever we could. That way of thinking is correct, but you acted wrongly. This will only serve to damage our economy in the long run. He paused for a few seconds. Out of goodwill, I will share a key piece of information. The Lotherberg Group has contingency plans if you decide to do anything rash that would disrupt their empires. You can't blame them, can you? Imagine someone trying to take your authority and personal wealth away without your consent. We only ask for a reasonable share, nothing out of the ordinary. And that is good to hear. If everyone plays the cards right, it will all be fine. Now, let's talk about those cards. Since the start of your campaign, you've adamantly promoted a planned economy. And going by that, I'm worried that you will attempt to nationalize Sultan's largest private corporations. Nationalization as a concept goes against everything my father built and stood for. If you do want to go down this road, I must insist on you excluding Heart of Sultan from any such plan. That is my most important request. You may recall that one of the charms of our agreement was that I may ask you for one favor. Well, this is it. Um. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really planning on doing anything anyway, so. Don't get your knickers in a twist. I was planning on leaving Heart of Sword alone anyway. That is excellent to hear. I knew we would be on the same page. I'm raising my glass to you right now, Mr. Pleasant. There is actually one more thing I would like to discuss. I will be blunt. Mr. Tusk is unfit to be the spokesperson for the Lotherberg Group. His archaic thinking has only pers uh, preserved a status quo that benefits himself and precious few others. It is high time something changed. And stop. Before you say anything more, I won't meddle in oligarchs' affairs. Ah, it was worth a shot, but I respect your decision. Very well, I won't push further. I have taken up enough of your time today. This has been a productive call. Thank you for your time, Mr. President. Thanks, Marcel. I'll talk to you later. After a couple minutes, I went back to reviewing the agenda. I don't really see any point in uh, making backroom deals at the moment. Hopefully with the anti-corruption police, we'll be able to take them down. But even if not, I'm pretty sure the anti-corruption police would take us down if we start making backroom deals. I'd rather not go down that route again. Yeah, but let's see. We've got a couple reports, a whole bunch of newspapers again. Let's, uh, let's head back to Uzerin first. Looks like we have four reports here. So, illegal crossings rise at Valen border. Border police have reported an increased number of arrests as Blutish and Vesk refugees attempt to enter the country from Valen. Temporary detention centers have been erected in Uzerin to process the deportation of the illegal entrants. And from Whole Sword, Supreme Court delays Urson case until further notice. Today, the Supreme Court has delayed the case of Ishval Urson without further notice, thereby allowing Governor Braun to continue his policies in Berja. Chief Justice Hawker stated that he did not fi yet find anything unconstitutional about Governor Braun's actions. The decision has sparked controversy and anger among those advocating for British rights, who have criticized the Supreme Court for failing to take action to protect vulnerable communities. The delay of the case has been seen as a major setback for those seeking to bring meaningful change in the country and has raised concerns about the impartiality of the justice system. Well, they're honestly probably not wrong with those concerns. Alright, from Lockhaven. 
increased support for Bluter's rights. Public opinion in cities like Lockhaven, known for their significant middle-class liberal population, is undergoing noticeable shift with a surge in support for Bluter's rights. The case of Ishval Erson has struck a chord with many individuals, leading to a growing sense of empathy and solidarity. The recent statements from officials of the WPB urging the government to incorporate changes to Articles 6 and 7 have resonated, uh, resonated strongly with the source population in these cities. Calls for reform to recognize and protect British rights are gaining traction, and there is palpable sentiment among residents that the time has come for meaningful change. Very nice. Alright, and from Holsor, General Staff releases negative statement. Earlier this week, the General Staff held a meeting which Joseph Lancia had voiced his concerns about the administration. According to rumors, Lancia said, if this president doesn't demonstrate the leadership that Sorla needs, both domestically and abroad, then it is time for a new person in the Maroon Palace. The sooner, the better. The fate of our republic depends on it. That's potentially not good, but that's right. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Alright. Let's check out the newspapers here. So, first up from the Holesor Post. Supreme Court delays Ishval Erson case and upholds Governor Brown's policies. In a significant development, the Supreme Court has decided to delay the case of Ishval Erson, allowing Governor Brown to continue implementing his policies in Burja. Uh, Chief Justice Hawker, in a clear assertion of constitutional principles, stated that no evidence of unconstitutionality was yet found in Governor Brown's actions. The Supreme Court's decision has stirred controversy among advocates for Bluetooth rights who have voiced their dissent over the court's perceived inaction in protecting vulnerable communities. However, the delay of the case has been met with res uh, resounding support from the patriots of this nation, who applaud the court's commitment to upholding the Constitution. Critics of Ishval Erson's arguments maintain that the Supreme Court's delay affirms the existing constitutional guarantees of equal rights for all citizens. This judgment serves as a powerful reminder that the rule of law remains paramount in safeguarding our society and upholding the values enshrined in our Constitution. It's nice racist nonsense yet again. Since the whole sort of post is pretty terrible. Anyway, uh, from The Economist, Gazam returns fall short for the state. In a disheartening turn of events, the state's returns on the GASM investment are significantly below expectations. The lackluster performance highlights the risks inherent in such significant ventures. The recent outcome underlines the necessity of prudent economic strategy in shaping the future of Sorland's energy sector. Analysts stress that this experience should guide future state investments. Pretty sure this exact same article popped up last turn, but that's okay. All right, Lockhaven Times. Protests erupt as British community expresses outrage over Supreme Court delay. Massive protests have erupted in Erzurum and its surrounding cities as tensions between the British community and the authorities have escalated following the Supreme Court's decision to delay Governor Braun's case. The demonstrations reflect the frustration and discontent felt by many British individuals who believe that the delay undermines the pursuit of justice and equality. Governor Braun's response to the protests has been to deploy special security forces to address the escalating tensions. However, it is important to balance security concerns with the protection of individual civil, li civil liberties and the promotion of peaceful demonstrations. As protests continue, it is essential to safeguard the right to peaceful assembly and expression. We encourage open dialogue and constructive engagement between the authorities and the British community to find common ground and promote a more inclusive and e equitable society. Alright, we've got two here from The Radical. Another injustice from the Supreme Court. In an expected but stunning blow to justice and equality, the Supreme Court has callously decided to delay the, course, uh, the case of Ishval Erson, enabling Governor Braun to continue his oppressive policies in the so-called special zone. Chief Justice Hawker's baffling claim that there is no evidence of unconstitutionality only further erodes public trust in what's left of our justice system. This outrageous decision has ignited a firestorm of anger among staunch advocates for British rights who condemn the Supreme Court's shameful inaction in protecting the most vulnerable members of our society. The delay in the case is an outright betrayal to those fighting tirelessly for meaningful change, leaving them in the lurch and questioning the very foundation of our justice system. We condemn the decision of the Supreme Court and are deeply saddened by the darkness that's growing over Sorland over the last decade, which has been exasperated by Anson Rain and his administration. However, the fight for British rights continues, undeterred by the Supreme Court's disappointing decision, as we strive for a future where every citizen is afforded the rights and freedoms they deserve. And refugees suffer because of rain. As more and more Blues and Vasics attempt to flee Valen, we are seeing the consequences of Anton Rain's inhumane border policy. Turned away from Swordland, families face homelessness, starvation, and persecution for Victor Smolak's regime. 
Some head to Lesbia, where they are accepted, but most undergo the country's labyrinthine asylum process. Politicians there are already complaining of a refugee crisis. Rain must act now before more lives are lost. And from Geopolitico, Arkazi and Canale relations, a fresh chapter. After tense negotiations, including a critical dispute resolution between Kinal and Arkazian private military corporate, uh, companies, Arkazi and Kinal have successfully restored their diplomatic relations, marking a significant milestone in global geopolitics. The restoration of ties comes amidst growing tensions within the ATO, as Kinal displayed signs of distancing itself from full membership to observer status, leading to delicate balancing acts. The ATO's response, including warnings to PMC CEOs and concessions to affirm Kinal's autonomy, underscores the strategic importance of this member state. Kinal will remain a full member of the ATO for the foreseeable future. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's uh, head to Whole Sword for a meeting with Lucian Galat, apparently. Lucian schedules some time with me to discuss the potential political repercussions of the upcoming economy meeting. He arrived on time as usual and took a seat right across from me. Good morning, Mr. President. Lucian had dark circles below his eyes. The plethora of political developments must have been weighing even on a workaholic like him. Oh, you look a bit tired. Are you getting enough sleep? I'm trying to, sir. Well, don't push yourself too much. I will try not to. I must say, you don't look much better. I looked at myself a small hand mirror. Similar circles were beneath my eyes as well. I booked some of your time to pre-plan for today's meeting at the Ministry of Economy. But before going into the economic direction, I want to give you a short status update. We have just received word about the case of Ishvara Ersen. The Supreme Court has decided not to act at all and delayed the case indefinitely. I am afraid Chief Justice Harker seems to be protecting Governor Braun from persecution. Moreover, the British community in Berger is getting increasingly restless over this topic. Nobody knows how long they'll keep delaying the case. This, of course, allows Governor Braun to keep his seat and continue his resettlement policies in Berger, among others. Now, this is very troubling. Do you have any idea how we can proceed? I don't think there's anything we can do about it at this point. Our strategy should be to get public opinion behind us. Luckily, Miss Morgan is already working on the semi-autonomous zone in Berger. We may still be able to get rid of the governor that way. However, there might be a problem with its timing. It would likely only be ready after the vote for the amendment. If the vote succeeds as we've been working for, your limited degree powers won't be enough to enact to change this grand. I'm afraid you'll need the approval of the assembly in that scenario. And I doubt they'll spot any change to Miss Braun's special authority. He's been a very important member of the party, as well as an important fundraiser. I'm sure we can find a way to convince the party by then. Of course, sir. There is one more thing. The representatives of the Belouge community, namely Mansoon Lee and Feti Ajal, have just released statements condemning our administration. They criticized your inactions on the Essen case, and they used very strong language doing so, I must add. They have enormous influence over our Belouge population, just something to be aware of. He took a look at his watch. For now, let's return back to the real reason we are here, our economic direction. We need to be cautious. Any grand plans about the economy also heavily influence our political standing. We will be changing our relationship with the old guard, the oligarchs, and the opposition. As you know, this meeting will give you the opportunity to alter the ownership of the Big Four, the largest corporations in all of Soldom. We can start the process of nationalization or privatization, or we can just keep the status quo. Again, I remind you that any change would tip an already fragile balance. I personally think we should stay out of this and keep things as they are. There's no need to make new political enemies at this stage in our churn. But ultimately, the decision is yours. Well, what are you leaning towards? How should we move forward? I'm definitely leaning towards just keeping it the, keeping it the way it is right now. So our administration will avoid upsetting the economic structure and maintain the status quo. Excellent. So this is the safest way to victory. Lucian took a look. Uh, took a took a note in his notebook. Good lord. <laughs> Although I think the oligarchs would have liked us to privatize everything, maintaining the status quo will not disturb our relationship with them. This means more stability, both economically and politically. Speaking of stability, some of my connections indicate that there seems to be a contest for leadership in the Lodeberg group. It looks like Marcel Kronti is making moves to become a key figure. 
Kuronsi probably wants his father's seat as head of the group, and Tusk doesn't want to let go of it. It's a significant power struggle, considering these are the heads of Solomon's two largest private corporations. Another reason why I'm supporting your decision to leave the situation as it is. There's no reason for us to interfere directly or indirectly in their internal struggles. Did Marcel or Tusk contact you? I did receive a call from Marcel. What did he ask for? I stopped him before I could say anything. Uh, not involving ourselves in the oligarchs' businesses will save us from potential headaches. At any rate, this internal conflict among the oligarchs puts us in an interesting position. Our relationship with Walter Tusk hasn't been good so far. Any move we make now has to be calculated and thought through. Lysian looked at his watch. Very well then, I'll cancel the meeting since we're not taking any actions. I must get back to work. I'm glad you've made this decision. Thank you for your time, sir. Lysian got up from his chair and left the office. Cool. Well, that makes that much easier. Apparently, we've tackled corruption now. What the heck? Uh, let's see. Order. Situations. Corruption tackled is a nice neutral thing. Okay. Yeah, apparently, our anti-corruption police are doing the jobs. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, geez. We've got a ton of reports and newspapers again. So, I guess let's just uh, let's start the newspapers this time. Why not? All right, from the Holsor Post, Swordish Cantana joint drills at Conriat Naval Base. United Cantana, having been granted access to Conriat Naval Base, have been running joint military drills with Swordish ships. The exercise is indicative of the deepening trust between our country and United Cantana following the deal, during which United Cantana also promised Sorland financial, logistical, and equipment support. Cool, I guess? All right, from Sorland's day, increased support for British rights outside of Berja. Many Swordish citizens around Sorland, particularly the city of Lockhaven, is experiencing a remarkable shift in public opinion as a wave of support for British rights sweeps through its middle class liberal population. The Ishval Ersin case has served as a catalyst, evoking a deep sense of empathy and solidarity among residents. The resonating statements made by the Workers' Party of Bolivia, WPB, and its officials advocating for amendments to Article 6 and 7 have struck a chord with the people of Lockhaven. Calls for reform to re uh, recognize and safeguard British rights have gained significant momentum, with residents fervently asserting the time for genuine change has arrived. Cool. And from Lockhaven Times, WPB condemns Supreme Court decision. The Workers' Party of Bludia, WPB, has vehemently denounced the recent decision of the Supreme Court in the Ishval Erson case, declaring it a grave setback for justice and equality. In a scathing statement, the WPB criticized the court for perpetuating discrimination and neglecting the legitimate demands of the British community. Accusing the court of turning a blind eye to the systemic marginalization faced by British people, the WPB called for a sweeping overhaul of the justice system to guarantee fair treatment and equal opportunities for all citizens. They also called the administration to action and included their proposal change or their proposed changes to Article six and seven and the upcoming reforms to right the wrongs of the justice system. The WPB's condemnation serves as a reminder of the urgent need for transformative change, emphasizing the importance of addressing the deep-rooted structural issues that continue to hinder progress and perpetuate injustice within the nation. Interesting. Okay. All right, we got three here from Geopolitico. Walker's capitalism versus Devereux's reform. As our cause of election drama unfolded, Charles Devereux of the Reformist Union Party emerged as a formidable challenger at President Dwight Walker. Devereux presented a vision divergent from Walker's stauncher cause in capitalism. He argued for a more balanced approach between the public and private sectors, suggesting that unchecked privatization and deregulation could breed systemic disparities. Highlighting the country's signs of economic stagnation, he attributed this to not only the considerable expenditures of the ATO alliance and Arcazi's frigid standoff with the United Cantana, but also the socio-economic structure itself. While Walker's legacy resonates with many Arkazians, Devereux's message captured the hearts and minds of a sizable constituency concerned about the widening chasm of inequality. As tensions heightened, especially among the Rumburgian migrants and Arkazians, the choice seemed to be between maintaining an aggressive capitalist trajectory or reconsidering the nation's socio-economic foundation. And, Kintanan ships from Conrad seen together with Vogslandia Navy. The enormous show of force against eastern Mercopan nations, in particular Agnolia, is continuing without any signs of slowing down. Reports from the Marking Sea indicate that the patrolling Vogsanian fleet was joined by several destroyers and cruisers of United Cantana, which were previously docked in the joint Cantana and Sordish naval base in Conriat. 
President Walker condemned both United Quintana and Swordland in a speech yesterday at Venture City, saying what the CSP nation is trying to do in eastern Marcopan waters is not only a threat to countries like Agnolia and Lesbia, but a threat to the whole of Marcopa. I condemn President Rain for bringing Quintana's ships into the Marquian Sea. He will be responsible if anything happens in the seas. Prime Minister Alvarez also condemned the event and demanded that the Quintana ships should immediately adjourn to their base in Conriax. And last up, tensions keep rising in the Marking Sea. According to reports from the Agnolian government, the Volkslandian fleet, which has been patrolling the Marking Sea, was directly responsible for the disappearance of two fishing vessels, a drilling ship and an oil tanker that belonged to Agnolia. Prime Minister Van Horten called the Alliance of Nations to investigate the incidents. Prime Minister Van Horten condemned Chancellor Hagel in his speech yesterday, saying, The Chancellor is trying to imprison us in our homes with a show of strength, but he should know Agnolians are not scared. We are always ready to fight for our home. Interesting. All right. Yeah, let's uh, check out those reports here. So let's head to Arvory first. Volks and Navy active in the Marking Sea. The Heliland Island has been a disputed territory for many years between Agnolia and Volksen, with Swordland standing on the sideline. Volksen's increased Navy activities in the Marking Sea are heightening a standoff between the two nations and sharpening the rivalry for each other. From Erzurin, massive protests against court decision. According to the reports, massive protests have broken out through the, throughout the city. Tensions between the British community and the authorities have increased. The protesters are expressing their outrage against the Supreme Court's decision to delay Governor Braun's case. Many believe that this delay only reinforces government's lack of commitment to the British people's rights and their overall agenda of suppressing them. Governor Braun reported that special security forces are already being deployed to the area to address the issue. From Rebel, BFF threatens the Supreme Court. According to intelligence reports, several leaders of the British Freedom Front held a secret gathering in Rebel following the Supreme Court's decision to delay the Ishvalarsen case. The BFF released a statement afterwards in which they threatened to carry out attacks against the justices of the Supreme Court. Minister Groff highlighted the seriousness of the statement and raised her concerns about the potential escalation of violence in the country. And from Holsor, the WPB condemns the Supreme Court. The Workers' Party of Bludia has issued a strong condemnation of the Supreme Court's de decision regarding the Ishval Ersen case. In a statement released by the party, they expressed a deep disappointment and disagreement with the Supreme Court, which they believe is actively enabling the discrimination and inequality faced by the Bludish community in the country. The WPB argued that the Supreme Court is further perpetuating the marginalization of Bludish people and disregarding their legitimate demands for justice and equal rights. They called for a comprehensive review of the justice system to ensure fair treatment and equal opportunities for all citizens. And the last one here is from the CSP. So CSP launches first three spy satellites, Leap and Surveillance. Marking a significant leap in its surveillance capabilities, the CSP has successfully launched and operationalized its first three spy satellites. Equipped with advanced imaging and radar technology, these satellites represent a critical step forward in the CSP's defensive preparedness and intelligent gathering prowess. The satellites, codenamed Kadzid... Kadzituk... Sure, okay. Validim and Oknihe will be operating in the low Earth orbit, providing continuous and broad coverage across potential regions of interest. They are designed to deliver high-resolution images for detailed intelligence analysis and incorporate advanced radar systems capable of penetrating cloud cover or darkness. This technological advancement underscores the CSP's commitment to a robust security framework and effective intelligence. Cool. Alright. Well then, that means we need to head back to uh, Whole Sword here. <clears throat> uh, let's start with the Unified Education Unified Education Language Act. As this one is pretty, pretty simple. The Grand National Assembly advances the Unified Education Language Act to strengthen national unity and facilitate consistent, comprehensive learning across Sorland. Section 1 of the UELA stipulates that all educational institutions in Sorland are required to conduct their teaching in the country's official language, except in the case of foreign language instruction. To offer courses in any language other than Sordish, institutions must obtain explicit uh, approval from the Ministry of Education. Any universities, technical colleges, or other educational institutions found to be non-compliant will face a temporary suspension of operations until they apply for and receive the necessary approval. Section 2 of the U UELA underscores the enforcement of the Act. Schools found to be in violation of these guidelines may face penalties which may include reduction or withdrawal of funding. 
In severe cases or cases of persistent noncompliance, total shutdowns may be enforced. This enforcement mechanism reinforces the commitment to unified language policy, ensuring a cohesive educational experience across the nation. Like I said, that was an easy one. Some nice racist nonsense there. We're not gonna, not gonna go for it. All right. So let's head back here for the results of the economic direction. Olivia intercepted me in my front office and informed me that I had a call from Walter Tusk. I entered and picked up the phone. Mr. Tusk, to what do I owe the pleasure? Good afternoon, President. I heard some disturbing news. News about a deal between you and Marcel Crotty. There is no such thing. So you say. Listen to me careful now, Rain. I suppress those rumors for you. For now. They will stay that way, if you do what I say. What do you want? Let me tell you what I want first, and I'll let you decide. That damn boy, Marcel Crotty. I want him out of the equation. I found some evidence linking him to the Coronelli Cartel, a powerful crime syndicate. What I want from you is simple. I'll feed the information to the officials. I want you to start an investigation into Hardest Sorbonne. That's all I ask. That's not too much to ask, right? Um, let's see. I mean... I don't know. Is this information about the cartel, t cartel ties verified? I wouldn't tell you if that wasn't the case. Keep my words, President, if you want to keep being one. The lion dropped dead. Interesting. Okay. Alright, well, with that awesome uh, little threat there, that feels like as good a place as any to go and call for today. So... As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you all next time.